Hi, my name is Mohamed or Mo, uh, and I'm an urban farmer. Um, I actually grow food on rooftops uh, in the heart of the city. It's an idea that I had about eight years ago. Um, and I grew up in Lebanon, I'm Lebanese originally, and I grew up in a farming village. So I know firsthand the challenge is growing food. Uh, the challenge is using pesticides, herbicides, fungicides. The challenge is making farming profitable and distributing food. Um, and I also remember a time when farming actually worked. I remember when my grandmother uh, put nine of her kids to university thanks to farming. But it was a very different kind of farming. In 2011, we built the world's first commercial rooftop greenhouse. Uh, it's a 31,000 square foot farm on top of a two-story industrial building that grows 40 varieties of fruits and veggies all year round. <coughs> Sorry. We're very proud of this project. We're very excited to have built this project. It was very challenging. Uh, we had to really bring in a lot of engineers and architects and plant scientists working together to make it happen. And our vision is simple. Grow food where people live and grow it more sustainably. And for us, sustainably means using no new land. Um, and turns out rooftop, rooftop spaces are amazing spaces to grow food. Not only do you get a lot of heat from the building below, in, in a city in Montreal that matters quite a bit, but you also get a lot of free, free light energy from the sun. Actually, this first site receives close to $600,000 of free light energy every single year. And you're right beside your consumers, you're right beside where your employees want to be. It just makes a lot of sense. Sustainable farming for us means using water, a very scarce resource, in a very responsible way. So we spent about a year and a half to develop the technology needed to use water properly. Uh, essentially, we capture rainwater on our roof, we store it in, in the basement of the building, we use that water for irrigation, we take all the excess irrigation that the plant rejects, we filter it, disinfect it, and we reuse it on a, on a, in a closed loop system. Once a week, we do a water analysis to understand what nutrients got absorbed and taken up by the plants, and we simply add back these nutrients. Um, since we've started the project, it's, it's been working flawlessly, and it allows us to use one-tenth the water, one-tenth the nutrients, but also it prevents nutrient-rich water from finding its, its way into the waterways. Sustainable farming for us means using no pesticides, herbicides, or fungicides. So we had to really copy what Mother Nature does, <laughs> introduce predatory insects into the farm to balance the equilibrium of, of the bad insects. And about a year ago, we saw the need to implement more technology into this process. It's a bit of an art right now, and we had to turn it more into a science. So we found ourselves developing an iPad application uh, where we walk into the farm and we inventory the, the population of good and bad insects, and we layer on top of that population data all the, uh, all the environmental data. So the humidity, the temperature, the light levels, and then we get predictive analytics on where the population will move and how will they grow or shrink. And that gives us a lot of comfort that we're able to grow food without pesticides. Sustainable farming for us meaning, means using less energy. Uh, so by being on top, of a, on top of a building, in a city like Montreal, we actually receive about half of the heating energy from the building below. <coughs> we're insulating the building, so the building uses about 25% less energy. And in the summertime, we're able to eliminate the heat island effect that's, that was caused by the black tar roof that was there. So it's, effectively, it's a nice symbiotic relationship between us and the building and the city. And finally, growing sustainably for us means having a direct link with our consumers. It couldn't just stop at the farm. Uh, we had to have this direct relationship with our consumer to make sure that the food that we bring to, our, to them was as fresh as possible. Um, at Lufa, if, if we had, um, had 4,522 cherry tomatoes ordered for tomorrow, well, we will harvest 4,522 cherry tomatoes. We never over-harvest, we never under-harvest. Uh, our plants, our, our greenhouse is actually our warehouse. Uh, we have zero waste, and all of our consumers receive food that was harvested the same day. It's kind of like the backyard that we can't all have. And we knew early on that we couldn't grow everything. Uh, even though we grow about 40 different varieties of, of fruits and veggies, we knew we needed a complete offering. So we partnered up with dozens of local farmer, uh, farmers and, and food makers that make, grow, press all the things that we don't, uh, from root vegetables to bread to juices to coffee and cheese, all organic, all local. And that allows us to have a very complete offering. So here's how it works. Our customers sign up to Lufa. It's a, it's a subscription service. Uh, and we have 4,000 subscribers, 4,000 families right now on this model being fed by our two farms and our partner farms. They get to pick and choose what goes in their basket. Um, so choice is obviously there. And they have till midnight of the day of the delivery to choose what they want. 
And at midnight, that's where the action happens. We send off emails to all of our bakers, harvesters, coffee makers, juice makers, and they go to work. And at 3 a.m. in the morning, we come to the office and we start packing these boxes as the food is arriving. Literally, as the bread arrives at 8 a.m. in the morning and still warm, we're packing it into the box. And we finish our pick and pack around 11 a.m. in the morning. We finish 4,000 boxes, about, about 1,000 boxes a day, actually, at 11 a.m. in the morning, and we're out the door for deliveries. And we don't deliver to homes. We deliver in, in bulk to pick up points, which are locations such as gyms, uh, community centers, schools. So every delivery is about 30 boxes, and we only spend about $40 a day in fuel to deliver food to 4,000 families or 8,000 consumers. So it's a very efficient method of, of delivery. So in 2011, we built the world's first commercial rooftop greenhouse. It's a very simple project, it's a very simple concept to think about, but it's a really challenging undertaking. You have to bring so many, so many people from so many different skill sets under the same roof to make it happen. We really believe that it would make a great, great plot for an Ocean's Eleven movie. Um, I mean, just imagine, you know, all, all the Mad Damons and, and the Cloonies and all the engineers and, and the architects and working in this hotel room and planning Oculus Rift. 3D, and at the end, they're all farming happily. I mean, it's just, a, it would make for a great, great movie, in my opinion. <laughs> so we're now just a three-year-old company, uh, and we believe that our work has just started. Uh, just last year, as an example, we built our second farm. It's a 43,000 square foot farm that was designed to be integrated into the fiber of a brand new building. Uh, really, we wanted to show this slide because we want to send the message that this is the best time to build rooftop farms. Design them when the buildings below are not yet built. So this is an industrial building. Uh, I think it's primarily a warehouse. And our engineers met, the, met their engineers and they collaborated to make sure that this structure is at its optimum efficiency and the lowest cost. We actually grow about 30% more food per square meter from our second site than we do on our first <coughs> site. And we're slated to grow about 120 metric tons of food from this farm on an, on an annual basis. <coughs> And now we've set our sights to other cities. Uh, we're looking for more cities, more rooftops, and more people to feed. Uh, we're actively looking to expand what we've done in Montreal onto North American cities and possibly even Euro European cities. And at the same time, we're working on improving our technology, uh, both the software and the hardware, to make what we're doing today better and cheaper. Our ultimate goal is to tell consumers, eat local, because it's better for you and it's cheaper. So I want to read you a quote uh, from John Bennington. He's the former uh, chief scientific advisor to the UK, UK government. And he says, the challenge for global agriculture <laughs> is to grow more food on not much more land using less water, fertilizer, and pesticides than we have historically done. Um, at LUFA, we're taking up this challenge. Um, at LUFA, we have a vision. Our vision is that sustainable farming is the marriage of nature and technology through software and community. Our vision is that sustainability starts with profitability and that a good idea has to touch billions. At, at Lufa Farms, our vision is a city of rooftop farms. And if we can make this work today, we believe we can make it even better tomorrow. Thank you.